Just walk his rights again. Just walk his rights again. Good day to you, it's me, Justin Hawkins. Um, this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again, my YouTube channel. Like, subscribe. Forgive me, I've got a little bit of a cold, so when I'm singing bits today, it's gonna sound ropey, but um, you'll get the idea. Um, today I'm talking about Foles. Foles, F-O-A-L-S. Uh, the song is called Wake Me Up. Here are some facts. I don't know anything about Foles, actually. Wake Me Up was premiered and released on the 4th of November. This year, 21. Uh, they're from Oxford, like the glass animals are from Oxford. Currently signed to Warners, one of my favourite record labels actually. They are considered one of the UK's top live acts. This song charted at number 98 in the UK charts, but for some reason it's trending. Oh, the Spotify rock charters have um, enlivened it a little bit, um, so maybe Spotify is going to make it more successful then, you know, what is ultimately a totemistic thing anyway? Who cares about what, where you go in the charts, you know? Uh, <clears throat> so, the song, Wake Me Up. Something like that. It's all just jamming on D minor, so it's like... Oh, yes. It's kind of like um, computer game funk, you know? It's sort of like the drums are super tight, super compressed. It sounds like it. Uh, is it. A, who produced it? Is it Mark Ronson? But that's what it's going for, I think. It's going for that sort of uptown funk kind of production a little bit. John Hill. Okay, it's a John Hill production. It's got this sort of, um, that little motif on one of the guitars. There's a few different guitars doing stuff around it in the way that old-fashioned funk does do. Um, there's a little bit of a sort of... Um, what sounds like a DX7 sort of uh, FM synthesis bass go. So it's do doing something like that, and then every now and then you hear a little, like a little suggestion of slap bass in there. Um, it's funk, Jim, but not as we know it. It's not like Tower of Power type funk where it's kind of human beings doing it. It's, it sounds like a computerized funk thing. Um, I imagine when they're live, they're either really funky or they're using a lot of track stuff. I don't know enough about this band. All this stuff, uh, when it's pedalling on a D minor, I can't help but be reminded of uh, a little bit of dad rock in the, um, um, another brick in the wall. That's it. It's difficult with this guitar. You know, that kind of... And then the chorus is just this. Oh, the beginnings of that. So that's pentatonic scale actually, um, in D minor pentatonic. Blues guitar players will know that one. It's all that stuff. <laughs> I haven't heard anything in it yet that I would say sounds original, you know? It reminds me of like the sort of thing you'd hear in, in the 80s. Maybe it's like a, a Go West B-side or something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's a great production because everything pops, especially when you're just listening to it on your phone. It's just so... It's just so flat, but also beefy at the same time. It's very linear in terms of its production. <laughs> Incidentally, there's a rock band from the UK with a song called Open Fire that goes like that. But crucially, the words in between don't matter. The the parts of the refrain that are going to be sung back by the enormous audiences that this legendarily brilliant live band play to will be singing along to the oh no and uh oh of this. So won't you tell me if I'm leaving oh, no. See that bit there? It's like. Oh, oh. It's like. Whoa! What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. Huh. Whoa. Uh. It's like that, you know? 
It's um. They must really love each other because I think in a room full of, um, you know, collaborators that are, are writing a song together, that wouldn't get over the line, I think, if there was anything at stake that, you know, in terms of trying to impress one another in the room. It's really just peddling. It's just peddling generic funk stuff over a D minor and then go whoa oh and uh-oh over four chords here while the drums just hold it down. You know, and it's sort of, I don't know, the, the sort of funky bits fall away at that point. Maybe it's catchy, I don't know. Is it catchy? There's some really good sort of um, chromatic percussion sort of keyboardy parts that's happening in the upper register, which reminds me a little bit of um, Talking Heads, you know, you may find yourself... That song. Oh, okay, well, apparently they are influenced by Talking Heads. You can sort of hear it. I would say The Clash as well, a certain period of The Clash. Oh, oh. That, when you hear a drum pattern that's going... It, first of all, it, it, it has a sort of superficial um, resemblance to the funky cold Medina or something like that where clip and clip and, but that actually um, was maybe not pioneered but I think most effectively used in this kind of disco funk world by the Gap Band you know a lot of their songs all started with clip and clip and clip and clip they've added some fancy modern touches like a or you know, like a there's some sort of uh, Bouncing on the bass drum bit stuff that's happening, but essentially it's the Gap Band. Clip and clip and clip and clip. And I think when people criticise the Gap Band, they see it as like a pop extraction of what funk is doing. I would say this is a another a further pop extraction of what the Gap Band was doing. Um, they may have some sort of um, Talking Heads influence, but it seems to be in the uh, production as opposed to what is actually doing. I mean in terms of like the, the top line and the vocal, there's nothing in there that sort of engages you and makes you think in the way that David Byrne's stuff does. Um, I'll probably do an episode on David Byrne and Talking Heads because there's a few songs that I think are maybe slightly deeper cuts that really ought to be listened to. Um, and maybe, that's, uh, maybe that will inform my understanding of Foles. I never really heard this band before. Um, there's something about this that reminds me of Wario. Remember Wario? He's kind of like the uh, antagonist in some of the Super Mario game stuff. There was one one sort of multi-game thing called Wario Party or something like that. I don't know. It's on the Nintendo Wii. I think it was a Wii game actually, and um, the incidental music in the in in menu in-game menu music just sounded like this Foles song. So, it's kind of got me on the back foot really because it's hard for me to listen past that. I mean, check out that for a riff. You can reduce that to this. It's the pentatonic scale, ladies and gentlemen. The root of all songwriting. Laziness. <laughs> Just kidding. I would like to hear some of these notes. Harmonic minor notes. See, when I hear anything that's like basic funk riffery in D minor, I find it difficult not to think about the Pink Floyd song. We don't need no education, but if you listen to that melody. got this harmonic minor second note in it this note here which is one that they finished that melody on while still pedaling on the D minor listen to how beautiful that is it's much less obvious than this 
it's much less obvious than this. And of course it's less obvious than this, which is the octave. Um, but what um, foals are doing are, is the pentatonic. So it's as a... Which is the third, it's one of the constituent um, elements of a really straightforward D minor chord. Um, so the similarities between that, it does not, it, it does not compare favourably to the Pink Floyd choice, which, whilst being 50 years older, has that note in it that isn't just there to make it posh, it suspends it in a really interesting way and pulls your ear in a different direction um, to just this generic... It's the difference is something like this. See what I mean? There's way more sort of anchor points in that melodic journey that you could uh, hang your coat on or uh, just have a little riff around. And it's just got way more poignancy in it, just in terms of how it sounds, really. It depends what you say, I suppose. You could just say, pa party, 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 party. But the fact that you're saying it with that note you're thinking, ooh, party. I wonder if he means like a party that's gone wrong somehow. Or maybe somebody spilt something or a, a relationship has collapsed during the course of this celebration. Um, but when you hear Foles, they could be saying, relationship, relationship collapsed during a party and it has no poignancy. You know, it doesn't really matter what you're saying because it, you don't care. You know, you've, they've created something that you're supposed to dance to and it doesn't actually matter what they're saying because it's just Wario incidental music. Um, having said that, there's something cool about this, which is that DX7 bass line. The reason why it's cool, it has that note. It's that note. It's a harmonic minor second. So the music is better than the singing, just in terms of how satisfying it is. And if it wasn't for this walking bass line that goes in the first bar of every revolution, it would not be worth listening to at all. I don't think it would engage. It would be like this. It would be really boring. That guitar part is not doing anything interesting. But the bass line is because of that. That note there, that's what stops it from being useless. Listen to that, isn't it sad and pulls you in? Party, have a nice party. That's the key to it. When you're in D minor, you can do a lot worse than putting an E in a walking bass line. You could even save a funk song. Justin Hawkins writes a... Oh, like and subscribe, <laughs> please.